Alright guys, so my sixth one will be... Let's do this monster, monster couple. Murder a little boy and will rage. What would you do if someone flipped you off while you were driving? Just put back, show them the peace sign, or simply let it go? Whatever you do, I'm sure you wouldn't behave like this couple who thought they were getting back on the driver but ended up doing something way worse. Let's dive in. Aiden Leos was born in Southern California to Joanna Clunin and Joey Leos. He grew up in a loving and supportive home with his mom and older sister, Alexis. Aiden was described as a sweet and lovely boy who loved laughing, telling jokes, and going to the park. He was also quite friendly and cared about everyone around him. One day at the playground, a boy with autism flung himself to the ground. While most of the boys around him ran away, Aiden stayed. He knelt down to the boy who had said that he didn't want to talk, and he told him, it's okay, you don't have to talk. He then extended his hand to help him up, and the two played together. Aiden was an extraordinary boy. Despite his young age, he was compassionate and didn't like seeing other people sad. He also loved spending time with his big sister and would often hang out in her room just so he could be close to her. He would often compliment her, telling her how beautiful she was, and would make up some silly dances just to make mm. her laugh. He would just come into my room and be like, Sissy, you're so beautiful. And like, Sissy, I love you. He was a rare That's how my brother calls me because he can't say sister yet. Him in my life. Aiden also loved his mom and would not go to bed before telling her good night and sweet dreams. That was the kind of boy he was, wise beyond his years. On the morning of May 21st, 2021, Aiden was riding in a booster seat in the back seat of his mom's car, heading north on the 55 freeway in Orange County. His mom was going to drop him at his kindergarten class in Calvary Chapel Academy in Yorba Linda. The two were at the carpool lane, and Joanna was about to switch lanes to exit when suddenly a car cut her off. Joanna was mad at the other driver who seemed unbothered about what she'd done. So Joanna flipped her off and continued trying to get off the freeway. She had no idea about the horrific thing that was about to happen. First, she heard a loud bang at the back of the car and then her son said ow joanna quickly turned to check on him and was shocked to see him holding his stomach and blood was coming out mm -hmm. she immediately pulled over took aiden out of the car and tried to stop the bleeding with her hands while still trying to call an ambulance and he said mommy my, my tummy hurts so she went and she picked him up and he was bleeding on her she had blood on her clothes and then the, he started turning blue and that's when the ambulance took him. Aiden was rushed to the hospital, but sadly did not make it. Joanna's entire world came crashing down around her. She was beyond devastated and could barely move or speak for a while. She felt like she was living in a bad dream that she could not wake up from. California Highway Patrol officers found a bullet hole at the back of Joanna's car and believed it had gone through and struck Aiden. The officers said the incident mm -hmm. was an act of road rage and urged anyone with information to come forward. They identified the vehicle of interest as a 2018 or 2019 white Volkswagen Golf Sports Wagon and was occupied by a female driver and male passenger. Joanna was distraught. She had to watch her little boy die in her arms. I can't imagine this kind of pain she must have been going through. She wanted justice for her son. He was beautiful and he was kind and he was precious. And you killed him for no reason. And I want to find them and I want there to be justice to for the story quickly spread and everyone was shocked and outraged by the incident. How could such a horrible thing happen on the freeway? Why would someone do such a despicable crime? A reward of $50,000 was offered to anyone who provided information that would lead to the arrest of the culprits. The money quickly grew to $500,000 with donations from people all over the state. I just hope whoever sees the Call on me, guys. <sighs> I'm sorry. Let's try to finish this and car, maybe who knows who owns it, um, and you know, come forward and you know, allow this family to have some peace and to uh, you know, justice to Aiden. Aiden's devastated family also pleaded for information. 
His uncle, John Clunan, said an arrest would bring closure to his sister's bleeding heart. A banner with the words, Who Shot Aiden, was hung on the overpass near where the incident happened as Orange County DA Todd Spitzer asked the suspects to turn themselves in. It's time to turn yourself in. It's time to understand that the longer this goes on, the less sympathetic I will be to understanding why you did what you did. Thousands of tips flooded in, and investigators followed why up you on keep, each one that Why you the killed the cute Meanwhile, little boy? Vigil was held on the underpass with friends, relatives, and strangers, filling the place with flowers, balloons, and stuffed animals. Joanna could not attend the ceremony, but she was represented by some close family members, including Aiden's sister, Alexis, who thanked everyone for their support, saying, I've been reading all the comments people have been leaving, and it's crazy to me that strangers can be so caring. My mom reads all the comments, too, and makes her smile. A GoFundMe account was set up to help Aiden's family with funeral expenses, and so far it has raised over $350,000. At the Calvary Chapel in Yorba Linda, where Aiden was a student, a memorial was held for him where students and teachers hung Aiden's pictures, ribbons in his favorite colors, and a sign that read, Aiden, we love you. The investigation to find Aiden's killers went on for over two weeks without any arrests. But then, on June 6th, investigators went to a home in Costa Mesa where the guy by the name of Marcus Anthony Aris lived with his girlfriend, Winnie Lee. The two were arrested in connection with the case and were taken into custody. Because they Marcus need to rest. Marcus admitted that he was responsible for Aiden's death and gave some really twisted excuse of why he did it. He said he got angry at Joanna for giving him the finger, so he decided to fire at her car. Like... Who does that? It's just insane what some people would be capable of just because they're mad at someone. This guy and his girlfriend didn't even stop to think that someone might have been hurt by his action. They just drove on to work and went about their day as if nothing happened. They never thought much about it until a week later when something almost similar happened again. A driver in a blue Tesla did something that apparently annoyed Marcus, so he picked up his gun again and pointed it at the guy. This time, though, he didn't get to fire because the man said that he'd call the cops and drove off. This guy is clearly crazy and has an obsession with firearms, which is a really dangerous combination. It's like he's just waiting for I him to use his gun. I use fact, guns on his and Instagram page, never my life. several pictures and videos of him using different types of guns to fire at targets. On May 28th, a co-worker came over to Marcus and was like, dude, your car looks like the one the cops were searching for. Marcus claimed that he had no idea what the guy was talking about, but then searched the internet and found the story about Aiden's death. He told investigators that he immediately knew he was responsible, so he started thinking of ways to avoid being arrested. The first thing he did was call his girlfriend, who agreed that they should hide the car and use his truck to go to work. Marcus then shaved his beard and started wearing his long hair back and in a tie. The couple even started applying for new jobs outside the state, That's but smart despite thing their to best do. efforts to evade arrest, the cops still caught up with them. Marcus was cops with could track their vehicle. <clears throat> During the where you the prosecutor said that Marcus was an extreme danger to the community and had shown that he could not control his temper and would go to the extremes when angry. Marcus pleaded not guilty to the charges and is currently being held without bail to await trial. If he is convicted, he faces four years to life in prison. As for his girlfriend, Winnie Lee, she is being charged with being an accessory after the fact and a misdemeanor count of having concealed a firearm in a vehicle. The prosecutor argued that she was also a danger to the public because she knew that Marcus had a loaded firearm in her vehicle and never pulled over to check on Joanna after the incident. She also failed to call the cops or do anything to follow up on what her boyfriend had done. If found guilty of these charges, she faces up to four years behind bars. Winnie was released on bail on the condition that she agreed to GPS monitoring and not to have any contact with Marcus. This story is both heartbreaking and infuriating. A little boy lost his life for nothing, for something so trivial. Someone was willing to pull out a gun and hurt another person. It just serves to show how crazy people can be. I do hope that Aiden gets the justice he deserves and this guy stays in prison for the rest of his life. Aiden was buried in a private ceremony where his family remembered him as a bubbly and happy boy who was loved by everyone. Joanna said her son loved seeing other people happy. On his sixth birthday, he blew out the candles and said, I just wish for everyone to be happy. It's just sad that it would take a while for his family to ever get over the loss and be happy again. Rest in peace, Aiden. That's the end of our video today. What do you think of this case? Should Mark it? Hi, guys. I will see you in my last video. <clears throat> so, I'll see you then.